In lesson four, we're going to have a look around the vSphere client to understand how the inventory is structured within vCenter. We'll use that client to manage the inventory, we'll create some vCenter inventory objects, and we'll use those to organize things like virtual machines and hosts and clusters and so on. Okay? We're going to add a data center object which represents your physical data center which actually contains things like your hosts and your clusters. Okay. We'll add our hosts to vCenter, okay, and we'll learn how to create some custom inventory tags for your different inventory objects. So what we're seeing here is a list of shortcuts that we see in our vSphere client. One of the things that you should note here is that on the left-hand side, you're going to see your vCenter inventory. And the vCenter inventory is made up of four different views. That is, four different looks into the things that you're managing with vCenter. You have your look for hosts and clusters, for VMs and templates, for storage, that gives you a list of your data stores, and for networking, which gives you a list of your virtual machine port groups and those sorts of things. So these are the four different views that you have. Now you can come back and switch between these views in a number of different ways. One of them is from the, home, from the menu up here. You can switch these different views. You can also do it from the shortcuts tab or the home tab, but you can also do it when you are in any one of these in, uh, inventory views. You can switch to the others with a couple of icons that appear in this area right here. So at this point, you'll be able to use the navigation pane on the left-hand side once you've selected one of those views. Right now, you can see those four views as they're represented by these four different icons, hosts and clusters, virtual machines, data stores, and networks. And once you're in one of these, and here we're in our hosts and clusters, you can switch between any of these just to get a different perspective on the inventory that you have. Now here in our hosts and clusters view, what we see are hosts and clusters. And I wanna walk you through this inventory if I possibly can here. I'm gonna to attempt to zoom in a little bit. We're gonna start in our hosts and clusters view where you see at the very top of the inventory your vCenter server. From there, you're going to create a data center. That's the data center icon, okay? This is a logical object, but it can certainly represent a physical data center or a portion of a physical data center or really nothing at all. But it's these two objects, the vCenter server and the data center, which are common between all four of these views. This is important to note when we're creating things like permissions, which can either apply in one of these four views or if a permission is applied to your vCenter or your data center, they can apply to all of the four views. Now within hosts and clusters, you're gonna see things like folders that you can create. In this case, I've got a folder called lab servers where I have an ESXi host and the virtual machines that are running on that ESXi host. Here's another ESXi host. And if I were to pull that one down, I would see the other ESXi hosts uh, sorry, the other virtual machines that were running on that ESXi host. As we move over here to VMs and templates, okay, we get a different perspective on the same idea. So this is the icon that represents virtual machines and templates. Now, on the hosts and clusters view, I don't see templates. So if you want to see your templates, you have to switch to the VMs and templates view. Now, in this view, I don't see any hosts and clusters, hosts or clusters. What I see is on the top, I see my vCenter and then my data center and then my virtual machines and the folders that I have used to help, that I've created to help organize those VMs. If you think about a host as simply um, uh, a root set of resources, CPU, memory, network, and maybe even disk, that, can, that my virtual machines can get resources from, then and treat them all identically, then it really doesn't matter which host a virtual machine runs on. I'm much more interested in just 
finding the VM that I need to work with. And that's what hosts and clusters view is really good for. The next two views are for storage and networks. And under storage, what you'll see again is vCenter and your data center, but all of the data stores, these are all of the places that I can store virtual machine files. Under networking, I see a list of my virtual machine port groups that are which networks do I want my virtual machine to attach to? Okay. So by using these four views, I really have a good working set of tools by which to manage my entire vCenter. Now, anytime I want to get information about one of the items in the inventory, I can click on that item in the inventory, no matter what view it's in, and go to its summary page. In this case, I'm viewing an ESXi host that's among the hosts in a particular cluster. Here it's called vSAN01, and I can see what version of ESXi it's running on. Here, let me zoom in one more time here. I can see what version of ESXi it's running on. I can see a little bit about the physical hardware. I can see that it, um, about the CPU. I can see how many logical processors, how many physical NICs, how many virtual machines are running on this particular ESXi host whether or not it's connected to vCenter, how long the host has been up. If I move over here, I can see the utilization of CPU and memory and disk space. Okay, And I can see even a little bit more of that information there. I can see what networks um, the host has access to. I can see what data stores the host has access to. I can see other objects that are related to that particular host. So all of this here is done and seen through the Summary tab. So we spoke about this data store. And one of the things that you should know is the very first thing that you want to do once vCenter is configured is to create that data store object. Sorry, not the data store, the data center object. I'm going to right click on vCenter and I'm going to select New Data Center. Now, these data center objects are just logical objects. It just helps me to organize the inventory. But it is something that I can use to represent a physical data center, a particular area, a particular floor, for example, of a data center, and those sorts of things. I can use it to help me, as a vSphere administrator, understand the relationship between, for example, ESXi hosts. Because if I have a data center, say, for example, in Toronto, and I have another data center in Los Angeles, then perhaps the virtual machines, you know, I'll know, I'll know where the virtual machines live. Oh, this is in one data center physically versus another data center. This virtual machine or this ESXi host is a part of this project, and I need to make sure that I have another host over here for my disaster uh, disaster avoidance, business continuity sort of thing. I can make sure that by organizing this into data centers that I have the resources that I need to survive those sorts of disasters and that sort of thing. Okay. Now there are implications of having, for example, hosts in multiple data centers when it comes to vMotion, when it comes to virtual machines and their access to storage. I want to make sure that my virtual machine is local to the storage. So, you know, I don't want to run a virtual machine on a host in Los Angeles, but have its storage in Toronto, for example. That would probably cause some performance issues, wouldn't you think? So this is what a data center object can help us with. Now, within the vSphere inventory, each of the data centers will have its own set of inventory views, virtual machines, templates, hosts and clusters, data stores, networks, and so on. So one of the ways for me to organize my inventory is by using folders. Now, I can create folders simply by right-clicking on an object, whether it's a host or a data center or um, another folder, whatever it is, I can create new folders. And those folders that I, I create are unique to each of the four inventory views. In other words, if I right click on a data center 
and I say, I want to create a new hosts and clusters folder, that's where I'm going to place my hosts, my clusters. If I switch to the VMs and templates inventory, I will not see that folder. If I want to see folders there, I can right click on the data center and say, I want to create a new VMs and templates folder. And I can use these folders once again to help me organize my virtual machines like we have over here, where I can create a folder, for example, for my virtual machine, uh, my database virtual machines, or my database templates, or my file and print server virtual machines. If I'm in my hosts and clusters inventory view, maybe I've got a series of hosts that are based on Intel processors, or a series of hosts that are based on AMD processors, and I can use those folders to help me organize and understand what that inventory is all about. Okay, so let's add a data center. Right? I'll right click on my vCenter server and I'll create a new data center. I can also create a new folder from here. Now, once I've created my data center on the right hand side here, I can right click on that and I can say new folder and I can create a folder that belongs to any of these four inventory views. So I can create a hosts and clusters folder, I can create a network folder or a storage folder or a VMs and templates folder. Once all of this stuff is done and we've started to organize some inventory, we might want to start adding our ESXi hosts. Okay, and This is a process that we're going to do in the next lab. I need to add a host to some sort of inventory object in the, v in the hosts and clusters folder. I can add a host into a folder. I can add a host into a data center. I can add a host into an existing cluster simply with a right click. Okay, I'll hit this button that says add hosts and I'll go through a little bit of a wizard where I can add one or more, more hosts all at the same time. So here I'm adding hosts and I'm typing in the fully qualified domain name or the IP address of a host and a username and a password by which vCenter can then log into the host take over the management of the host by creating its own user account, saving its password in vCenter's database in an encrypted field. Okay, So here I've got a couple of ESXi hosts. I've typed in uh, the fully qualified domain name of those hosts, and I've added root as the username and the password for root. Now, if I've got the same root password on all my hosts, I can just hit this little checkbox and use the same credentials for all the hosts, making it much faster than you know separately typing in the username and hopefully a complex password, long complex password that you've got for each host. Just hit a little checkbox there and it'll run, finish the wizard, recognize it'll ask you to assign a license to that host, okay, and you're good to go. Now it's nice to place inventory objects into folders. It really does help me to organize those inventory objects, but you can also add tags to inventory objects. This will allow you to apply policies to those inventory objects. And it'll also allow you to take things like virtual machines, where I've got a virtual machine that you know, might belong to my exchange group of systems, but it's also a database. And I can't place that VM into two folders at the same time, one for exchange and one for databases. So maybe what I need to do is just add two tags. That way I can actually then search on any of these tags and have the relative uh, and have a search result that can apply to all of the VMs in the entire inventory, regardless of the folders that they're in. I can say that certain VMs, for example, are production VMs versus staging area versus test area virtual machines. And that'll really help me to manage virtual machines, um, to update guest operating systems. I can do a search on not only tags, but things like what guest operating system, whether VMware tools needs to be updated, all kinds of really great things that I can do searches on in this environment um, by not only creating tags, um, but also simply by looking for particular attributes of a virtual machine to help me then to start a project to do upgrades and things like that. Well, we've got a couple of labs that we're going to do right here. This seventh lab that we've got here starts by creating a data center and then adding our ESXi hosts to the inventory. We're then going to view some information about those ESXi hosts 
We'll configure N NTP for those hosts. We'll create some folder. We'll create a folder for the hosts and then drag and drop the hosts into the folder. We're also going to create some folders for virtual machines and templates. In lab number eight, we're going to join vCenter to the vclass.local domain. Okay. Now, there's going to be a requirement to reboot your vCenter afterwards. And like I said, this takes a little bit of time. It might take 15 or 20 minutes for that reboot to complete. Okay. So allow for that amount of time um, um, and go ahead and move on to the next lesson while that VM is rebooting. You don't have to wait until it's completely done. So that does it for, um, for lesson number four here in module four, where we've looked a little bit about uh, at the inventory here, right? We've helped to organize our vCenter inventory objects. We understand what a data center is. We've added hosts to our vCenter and we're now managing hosts by vCenter and we're creating some custom inventory tags and objects. When we come back, we're gonna have a look at lesson five and look at roles and permissions within vCenter. See you real soon.